on, everybody? Welcome to the Big Dog Podcast. I'm Josh Wilson, and I got, as usual, Jonathan Mack joining me in the studio. What up? What up? What's going on, Jonathan? Nothing much. You have a good Christmas? Yep. Just winding down, getting ready to get back to work. Nice. I told our friends last week that they weren't going to hear from us this week, yet here we are. Surprise, surprise. Are you, though? <laughs> <laughs> are we, though? Um, so here's the thing, man. I just I texted Jonathan yesterday. I said, hey, let's get in the studio tomorrow morning or maybe it was Tuesday um I had oh man just some stuff on my brain just want to share a quick message with you guys and um hopefully get you thinking as we roll into the new year um this weekend um so I've taken some time been out of the office for about a week or so I guess now and um a lot of great time with family um time with friends conversations catching up with people uh, things like that. And there's this, there's this underlying thing that's kind of gotten on my damn nerves the last week, Jonathan. And it's the amount of people who are dreading going back to work. You know, a lot of people I know are off between Christmas and, and the first of the year, you know, not, it's just maybe they're teachers, maybe they're whatever, who knows. Um, but not, a lot of people I know went right back to work, you know, Monday of this week. And so, it, but regardless of whether it was Monday or whether it was, you know, the third, they're going back to work. The overwhelming theme was people are like, oh, I just, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. So I'm tired. I'm burnt out. I don't want to go back to that job. I don't want to do this or that person I work with or, or whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm sitting there. Shut the f- up. Like, God, are we serious right now? Like what? <laughs> are you serious right now? And all I could think about is if you're, if that's you, like if you're listening right now and I'm talking to you, I don't care whether you work for me, you work for somebody else, you do your own thing. If in your mind you are dreading getting back to the work, please take the next 90 days and figure out something else to do. Like this life is too short. We get one go round. And yes, you've got to work to provide for yourself, you know, for your family for your circumstances, um, and your situation, but it doesn't mean there's a lot of things that you can do right now. There are so many things you can be doing. I don't know of a single company that's not hiring right now. And so if you are unhappy with what you do, now is the time to make that switch, not sit around on the paid time off that the job you hate gives you and about having to go back. No one's forcing you to go back. No one's forcing you to go to that job every day. It's a decision. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I think that the big thing is that a lot of people, and I have sympathy for it. Yes, the past two years have been hard on people in general, but you can't use that as an excuse to say like, oh, I don't want to go back. I'm dreading the work environment. Because quite personally, I feel like a lot of people just don't enjoy what they're doing at the moment. And like you said, take the time to figure out what you could be doing. I have no sympathy. I have none. I don't think the two last two years have been hard on people. I think the last two years have been hard. But I know more people than I've ever known in my life that are doing better than they've ever done in their life are winning more than they've ever won in life. And... I can't, I just, I can't get on it. I cannot, has there been loss? Has there been things? Has there been that it's had? Uh Uh-huh, a hundred percent. It has been hard. I feel that we're at that point now though, where people are using it as justification to stay lazy and excuses for why they're not winning, why they're not moving forward. Everybody can throw the last two years up as a, as an excuse for why they are where they're at. 
rather than it being an opportunity to be where they want to be. I have no excuses. In the last two years, I am where I am right now this minute because of the decisions I made over the last 24 to 36 months, period, period. We could have done things a lot differently. We could have shut down. We could have freaked out. We could have done all this stuff, but, but we didn't do that. We acted appropriately. We responded appropriately. We made no excuses. We, but I think what it comes down to is that we don't look for reasons to not be able to do something. Yeah, you're not, what I'm saying? You're not looking for a reason why not. You're looking at a reason. One reason too. Yeah, like one reason why we should. And I think that it's uh, important to note like, Yes, the world stalled. It sounds like that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah the, sure. the world stalled, but what you did while it was stalled, did you stall with it or did you continue to move forward? Right, and everybody had decisions to make, and whatever decision you made, hey, that's your decision. Cool, it's no problem. You're good, come on. <laughs> you know, it's, it's your decision. It's, it's, it's what it is. Um, but, I, but damn, man, people look for and pay attention to all the reasons why they can't do something or excuse or justify hardship rather than putting all their energy into that one reason why. And people are wired differently. That's okay. All I'm saying is if you're the type of individual that focuses on the one reason why you have to rid yourself of surrounding yourself with people who are focused of all the, of, on all the reasons they can't. Because if you're the one, the per, type of person who's focused on the one reason why you can, you got that winning mindset. And people who are focused on all the reasons things are hard and all the reasons they can't do something and ignore that huge glaring reason why they can, that's a loser mentality. Loser mentality. And you cannot, if you if you want to win, you cannot have those type of people around you. Honestly, I wouldn't say loser mentality. I'd just say defeated. You're admitting defeat, which is essentially a loser mentality, but defeated. A loser could come back and win again. But if you're just defeated, not going to play again, not going to do Oh, no, 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 I, no. There are definitely, I think there's levels to it. And I, yeah. think, I think you're 100% correct with that because um, I've seen those people. I've seen those people in my industry. I've seen them in different industries. And, um, you know, it's, <laughs> um, we, we've talked about wiring and how we're wired. People are wired differently on the show before. And like, okay, you know, we, one of the reasons I focus on the one reason why I'm obsessed. Like I am, I am obsessed with, our businesses. I'm obsessed with my family. I'm obsessed with, with us getting better. Um, I'm obsessed with, with, with being better for the dogs and our clients. Uh, like, like I am obsessed by this. I just don't think about it every once in a while. Um, it's not like a, a fleeting interest you know, that I have. And let's see how this dog thing plays out. Like I'm obsessed with this entire journey and th that, that's why I'm in here right now. That's why I've been in here. I was in here yesterday. I was in here the day before yesterday. For, I didn't need to be in here. Like I, I'm not saying that's like the way to be and in, in the healthiest approach. However, I'm freaking obsessed with this junk. It is not an interest, and there is a big, big difference. And if you if you really want to to go to the next level with things it almost has to be an obsession. And I think those who are obsessed, they do focus on that one reason why, right? Cause they're hunting, they're searching for it. They can't stop because if you're not obsessed when it's hard, cause I think people think uh, entrepreneurship and, and stuff, particularly when you see like a lot of these big time people, you know, on social media and stuff and the cars and planes and all this stuff, they just like, Oh, entrepreneurship is just glamorous thing. And, you know, gosh, they're just traveling everywhere and it's so easy and, and that's fire. This is that man, these people are obsessed 
the real ones, not yeah. the ones who got the Turo Lambo in front of the, you know, Airbnb for a photo shoot, but the ones who are really champions, like these people are obsessed with this. They're obsessed with the process. They're obsessed with development and getting better. You have to be because it's so damn hard. Like there's so many losses. There's so many heartbreaks. There's so much lost money. There's so much bad investments. There's so many uh, you know, staffing failures and people that let you down and you let yourself down. Like it is hard and sucks 90 plus percent of the time. If you're not obsessed, you can't survive all the bullshit. Yeah. And here's the, here's the, where I believe the disconnect lies with a lot of people who hear that advice and they're like, well, I'm obsessed with doing better, but they're not seeing results. Yes. No one situation is a monolith or an example for everything. Yep. Like people have different circumstances and us sitting here and saying like, be obsessed with it might not work for everybody. But at the same time, sure. I can say that the one monolith that I think is out there, the one example end all be all is winning. Everyone who does win in the end is obsessed with it. For sure. You have, you have to have that mindset. And I just don't believe it's going to happen if you don't. Well, it can't. People are more focused and they would never call well, Most people wouldn't call it this, but complacency. And, and when that sets in, you know, it's complacency is like the, the a cesspool of excuses. Which is right? essentially the past two years. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, this is why, or, or this is why, and, and, and this is why. And I, it just drives me freaking mad. Um, it's just maddening. And, and the thing is, I don't necessarily care that people are that way and feel that way. I care when I, when I realize you got to go. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't be around. I can't have you around me anymore because you've, you, you, you suck the life out of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've had to have and, conversations with friends like that. Cause I mean, listen, it's, I'm 20, 23, about to be 24. Life has been hard. I graduated and spent a lot of my formative years in the past couple of years during a pandemic. Yep. But I didn't sit in Charlottesville at school and say, Oh, well, I'm going to wait to graduate. I'm going to wait to finish school, look for a job. Like I have a job. I came home. I stopped doing school, came home and started working Yep. because I knew I would need money during a pandemic. So, yep. I mean, to each their own, but at the end of the day, do you want the same note of sympathy that the rest of the entire world is getting? Yeah. The last two years have been hard. The sympathy that people are getting though is the game and it's what It's just bullshit. It's just bullshit. You chose to come home because it, and it was hard. That was a hard decision and you've been working, but I also believe that the work you've been doing over the last 18 to 24 months is why you were in a studio working on some really cool stuff a week and a half ago, which is why you were shooting a video for your music. You know, it, there's things that you've done over the last 18 to 24 months to put you, put yourself in that position. And maybe you didn't see it 18 months ago, but you kept moving forward. And that's the part where it's like when you're in the mindset of complacency or you're in the mindset of uh, woe is me or the mindset of I don't, I don't want to, gosh, I, I just hate that job or I don't want to go do that. I don't want to go back. You, you're skipping the part where it's like, hey, you may hate that job. I, I get it. I get it. You may hate that job. You may hate that prick you work for. You may, whatever. Is it moving you forward though? It may just be that. And you got to get your mindset right to where it's like, Hey, I'm going to go do this job. I get out of there at five. I'm chilling with my family till seven, seven 30, seven 30 on. I'm working on me. I'm working on my stuff. I'm working on what I'm passionate about. I'm working on what I care about. I'm going to get up. I got to be at work at eight. I'm going to get up at four. I don't know how many times you've been in here in the studio before the sun comes up. We got podcast day. You're working on music before the podcast even comes up. Like, no one's telling you to do that. That's you. You're driven by that. You are passionate about that. And in turn, you're very motivated. For sure. And I think a lot of people don't have that passion, like we said earlier. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my passion ultimately isn't music. My passion ultimately is to be unique. So sure. I've decided not to let oh, you're my, unique. 
Yeah, I'm, I've decided not to let my hardships define me because they're not what makes me unique. Sure. So I will be honest. I sat and I was real big pity party for probably a year. Just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Can't perform. Can't even go back to school. Yep. But like, that's a lot of people. What am I going to do to be different in the midst of it? It's just work. Yep. It's all just work. It's moving forward. Yeah. But you're going you're gonna to work regardless. Like you're gonna work. That's there's a very small there's a small percentage of people in this world that will come into this world and leave this world without ever having to work. Right. And so, you know, it it's for us, it, it is gonna be work regardless. You might as well be working on something that um interests you, draws you in, gets you that and And this isn't me saying you gotta find something to do on your own. That's not what most people do, but there's plenty of opportunities out there to do things that you do want to do more now than ever before. So having to hear the excuse of, or the whining and complaining about having to go back and do something that's freaking bananas. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's because ultimately people don't know what they're passionate about. They don't know what they want to do and they're lost. The past, however long has made them lost. You're a very compassionate person. Yeah, I have a lot of I have a lot of I have a lot of sympathy for the the general people because I I feel like I've been lost. You know, it's like sure, but damn, like figure it the hell out, like just, like figure it out. And that's the thing is, someone with that sense of direction, you're looking at people you care about. Like, I right, come on, come this way. But, but it's not can't. that I have that sense of direction. I haven't always had a sense of direction. I haven't had that. And the, and the direction I'm on right now, who the hell knows where it's at in 10, 15 years? That may change. That may pivot. And that's okay. But it it's the moving forward piece. It's the mindset piece, the mentality piece. You don't have to have clear purpose and direction to have a good attitude. You don't have to have clear purpose and direction to find motivation in a day. You don't have to have clear purpose and direction to have gratitude when you wake up in the morning, you know what I mean? It, it, Cause it, that process of getting to that purpose and direction is hard. That's the hard part for sure. And everybody has the opportunity to control their own personal narrative and their attitude when it comes to that process. But it's almost like the trending thing is, uh, woe is me. I just, I just can't see it. And that's not me not seeing it from a, from a, a, a point of view of, oh, I know my direction. I know my purpose. That's just generally speaking. Because we've talked about on this show, like I have been in <laughs> across the map in really good places and really, really terrible places. You know, and that doesn't mean I didn't have moments of self-doubt. And there weren't moments of focusing on all the reasons why I can't and letting that cloud, you know, the mindset. But I have figured out a way to work through that crap every time. It's not like one defining moment of, oh man, this sucks. You, you screwed up real bad. You failed. You're, you're in a bad spot. Like it's, uh, uh, it's damn near daily. Running a business is damn near daily. You know, and you you have to build up that mental fortitude um, and then get that mindset right to where you can move forward. And it doesn't have to be huge. Just just figure out ways to move forward. And if you continue to move forward and you keep that positive mindset, things do come to you. Opportunities do come to you. That I can definitely attest to. Right? Literally just the power of like, all right, I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to make things happen could change your next month, two months drastically. For sure. I genuinely believe that. We could have, I I believe 100%. When I texted you the other day, this stuff was on my mind. And I was like, okay, I'm supposed to be heading out of town. Let me go jump in the studio for a bit. There's one person that's going to hear something that we talk about today that's going to change their tomorrow. There's somebody who's going to hear this today. It's going to change their tomorrow. And that's why I texted you and said, hey, let's jump in the studio. One person. One person. 
Don't need thousands of people. Just one person. That is totally worth it. And 100%. that's why I, that's why I text you. There's something you're going to say or I'm going to say that's going to change that for that one person. Real quick, how sick does the logo look on the wall with the sun coming through the doors? Oh, yeah, it's kind of fading. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Right, isn't that wild? I like that. I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe the wind or whatever, but... Um, I'll, t- I'll turn the camera and I'll, <laughs> I'll put like a little visual because we're just talking yeah. at this point. Um, Show the people. You know, so, you know, that, that's the big thing. And then the last thing um, that I wanted to, to mention and, and talk about is, man, more... <laughs> More than ever, Jonathan, um, are we catching flack, like from from people and organizations and in different groups? And um, it's so funny. I, I was like, "Damn!" I was like, "Man, they're talking a lot of shit." And you, you, I, it always is funny to me when people do that because it kind of plays back to them the focus on the million reasons why you can't do something rather than the one reason you you can't. And, or the one reason that you can, and I'm like, all these people that are worried about me or worried about, you know, our business and, and, and what we're doing, if they, if they would just dial in and focus on themselves and not worry about us and what we're doing, um, we've got some people who we've worked with in the past in the area who are just making themselves look really silly, just saying not really kind things about us or, you know, how we do stuff and in the business or, or me. And I'm like, damn, like, I never understand that. I'm like, we can just no longer work together. I mean, then we can move on and, and be happy and healthy and, and all those things. And, um, it, there's just a lot of chatter. We're just getting emails and we're getting calls and we're getting stuff from people. And I, I come back to the part where it's like, wanting to let them know it, it, like we are obsessed with what we're doing. We are obsessed about the dogs and taking care of them and making them better. Uh, we are obsessed about developing our team and, and making them better and impacting as many people as we can. And, you know, if we're on their nerves right now, um, they're really going to hate us in 2022 um, because we're not fucking going anywhere. And it's, it, we're just going to get better because that's how we're driven. And, you know, that's what we're motivated by. We are not complacent. We are not a place that is going to rest and celebrate on, uh, you know, 2021, which was a great year for us, right? But we're not the ones to just, just sit back and relax on that. I, that's why I can't sit back and relax during this little break that the admin team is on um, because I'm focused on 2022. And, you know, people who are on our team, if they feel like we did something in 2021 and that's, that's the height of their progress, they're going to hate being on our team in 2022 because we all got to get better. We all got to level up. You know, this show is going to get better and level up. Your skills are going to get better and level up. Um, Our guests are going to get better and level up, you know, my content for you guys is going to get better and level up and, and we're going to be doing more um, from a generosity standpoint. I felt like we were very generous last year, but it pales in what our goals are for 2022 from a generosity standpoint. Um, our team is growing. We've got so many um, amazing trainers on deck that are coming through our, our processes here in the first quarter, you know, as we continue to grow across all locations, Um, we have some other business ventures that, that we're working on and we're going to be rolling out. It's, and so this is just kind of like that, you know, that end of the year gimme for the, the, the people that that don't wish us, you know, well in success. When you say these things about us, it's fuel. It doesn't piss me off. I love that I'm on your mind. Like, I appreciate that because if we weren't doing anything well, Nobody would give a shit. If we weren't doing anything worth noting, nobody would give a shit. Because that's what always happens. You know, people start doing well. People start growing. People start getting attention. People always look for reasons and, and ways to try to, to pull them down. And I've always hated that. Um, 
Because again, I think, you know, you focus on your own lane and your people and your team and, and your clients and, and there's, and everybody can, can win. Um, I think that's the most frustrating thing that's kind of arisen out of the past two years is that we've spent all this time in our house. So people are like, let me just look out and see what's going on in the world around us, right. around me. And they don't yeah. focus on anything that's going on with them. And I think a lot of the negativity from people is not just towards, I mean, general layers and layers of it's, negativity it's all around. Um, but my thing is they're throwing this negativity because they're pissed off that they sat around and did nothing. They sat around and watched. Keep on sitting around and watching because we're going to keep on giving you a show. I mean, we're going to keep on, you know, doing the work and, and cause, cause we're not, there is, there is no pause. There is no time out. Um, this isn't, and if you're an entrepreneur or small business owner and big business owner, and you don't, and you don't feel that, or you don't understand that the game just may not be for you. Because this is what the game requires. It requires an obsession um, if you want to survive and win. Because it's a competition. Whether you want to look at it that way or not, it is a competition. And when you're chilling, there's other people out there working. And I'm not this one's like, oh, you got to be up at four and stay up till one and you got to be grinding. No, 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 no. You got to work both smart and hard. That's it. That's it. And you got to make sure you prioritize your time with your family and prioritize, you know, those things. But and for those people thinking like, I've just been in the, the office this week. No, I've had movie days with the family. You know, I played more games than I care to talk about. I'm about to say, I've been in here when you weren't in here. I can attest right. to it. Monopoly champ right here. Monopoly champ. The other night, though, I took an L. I took a big L in Monopoly. See, I love Monopoly. Everybody else hates Monopoly in my family. I love it. They, I, I crushed everybody first night we played. Second time we played, there were like six of us. Whole damn table ganged up against me. They ran me out. It was messed up. Sometimes you get jumped in life. Oh, man, they jumped me. They jumped me. It was bad. And it wasn't like a jump in. They weren't trying to let me roll with them afterwards. No, they beat my ass and just left me in the gutter. Um, then last night we played. Oh, how the tables turn so quickly. So quickly. I love Monopoly. Love it. Love it. We're, we're the type of family, though, like we will throw a board. We will flip a table. And I'm talking about my mother. Okay. Hi, Mama. I'm talking about my mother in this. I mean, it, it, will, get, it will get nasty. Flip, flip the board and then drive off in that nice new Mustang, right? Oh, man, Jonathan, that was a cool thing. That was a really cool thing to see. That, that made, a, me, made me happy. Very, very rarely these days do I smile at my phone. Um, man, that was a really cool thing. And it was a blessing to be able to do that, um, for my mom and, um, you know, it was one of the coolest moments of my life. It was really, really awesome. And, um, yeah, for those who don't know what Jonathan's bringing up, um, my mama, she is retiring in January, which I'm really excited for her. Um, she has spent a lot of years working out at uh, Hampton University, the Pirates, and um, she's retiring in January. And her dream car has always been a red Mustang convertible. So for Christmas, she got a red Mustang convertible. And that was really damn cool. And we really, really, really surprised her. And she was freaking out. And it was cool. She texted me on Sunday and um, she says, it, the text comes through and it has Josh and then it has, how's your day going mom? And then it says, mom. Oh, awesome. I've just spent the last three hours driving around in my beautiful new car. <laughs> she just, she's just rolling and how it was so cool. Cause Saturday was Christmas and it, here in Virginia, it was 65, 67 degrees. She had the top down. She's cruising. Kind of concerning, but we'll address that. At a yeah. Right. Bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's another episode for with people far smarter than either of us probably oh, yeah. involved I, in. I walked out the house this morning and start, I was like, yep, me my too. Collar, like, I had on my new jacket and I mean, I was sitting there I was like, this is kind of warm. I'm going to die um, in the studio, but I just got the air on. We're fine. But yeah, mom's really excited. Um, you know, I think it was about four to four and a half minutes from the time we surprised her with it to where she was in the car rolling 
and it was a four and a half minute video. We got her squealing tires out here going down the road. I'm like, Oh Lord, what have we done? So she was pretty fired up and that was, it was a really fun moment. We had a great, um, great Christmas as a family. And, um, yeah, we just really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. I had a good time. I got a microphone and an interface, more stuff to work with. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. So here's the thing, guys, we got new year's coming up. The first is on Saturday. I want to wish you a happy new year. I want to wish you, um, triumph. And I want to wish you leveling up in 2022. Um, opportunity abounds, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it is there for the taking. I don't care what your profession is, what your industry is, what your, um, skills are opportunities right now are just limitless. And if, if you can't come up with a single reason why you can, you really need to spend some more time reflecting. And I would challenge you to commit to the first, you know, 45, 60 days of the year. If you're unhappy, if you're miserable, you know, with where you're at, if, if you don't feel purpose driven, commit to the first 60 days of the year as to really looking internally and focusing on why and maybe what does interest you. We're not in a position where you got to do things that you don't want to do forever. We all do things that we don't necessarily want to do for a season, and that's okay. But have your plan on what gets you to that next step. So spend these next 60 days. Start today. Start today thinking about it and figuring it out. And having conversations with people that you care about and trust. Don't have conversations with the same losers that you've been hanging with all this time who are going to keep you in the same spot. You need to have new conversations with new people. Reach out to us. You know, let us know what's going on with you and, and how we might be able to help. But take start today and take the first 60 days of the new year and figure that stuff out for you. Nobody should have to be in a position where they're dreading going to work on Monday or getting back to their business on Monday. Cause there's plenty of those people too. Plenty of business owners. And I'm like, damn bro, you built this. Why'd you build something you hate? That makes no sense to me. Get the hell out. And you don't got to hate it just cause every day isn't fun. Most days aren't fun. Most days aren't glamorous. I would argue no day is fun unless you consciously make it fun. Oh Yeah. You can find fun in the day. Yeah. You know, but like th this is hard. And if you've chosen self-employment, if you've chosen uh, to be an entrepreneur and, and, and build a business, whether it's a one man shop or you're growing like crazy with staff, you've chosen this. You can choose not to do it too. take the next 60 days, figure out what that path looks like for you. Cause we just, we got to win. We got to get our attitudes better. Because these people with shit attitudes, you're going to be lonely. Because more people are getting on my mindset or we're just cutting it out. And you're going to lose people. And you got to be okay losing people. I wish you a happy new year. I wish you success. I wish you tons of wins. I wish you happiness. And we're going to catch you next week.